puberty blockers, drugs that are used to delay the changes of puberty in transgender youngsters. Well, the government, NHS England, has just confirmed that children will no longer be prescribed puberty blockers at gender identity clinics. We're going to win because we do have the truth on our side. I want to celebrate some great news that we had yesterday coming out of England. And no, it has nothing to do with the new Monty Python movie or Benny Hill being resurrected from the dead, although that would be phenomenal. No, it's even better than that. Take a look at how Sky News reported it in their, well, rather dry and droll way. Uh, let's just bring you a bit of breaking news, which may be of interest to, to some of you. Uh, it's about puberty blockers. Now, uh, these are drugs that are used to delay the changes of puberty in transgender youngsters. Uh, in terms of how they are prescribed by the NHS, there has been a lot of controversy over the last few years about this. At the moment, they are only prescribed to children attending gender identity services as part of clinical research, um, and they are, are, are not routinely offered to children at gender identity clinics, but they are still offered. Well, the government, NHS England, has just confirmed that children will no longer be prescribed puberty blockers at gender identity clinics. This is coming from NHS England that just broke in the last few moments. That was yesterday, midday, and it's a huge, huge blockbuster, enormous story. Uh, let me sort of give you a context here, all right? Um, in England, they've already sort of been trying to downshift and walk back this march toward uh, stopping children from going through the natural process of puberty. Uh, the idea of what's now euphemistically called gender affirming care that involves uh, hormone therapy, puberty blockers, and in some cases, actual surgical procedures. They, they euphemistically now call it top surgery and bottom surgery. But what it is, is, well, it's, it's the mutilation of a perfectly healthy young child either removing their perfectly healthy breast tissue, top surgery for girls, or bottom surgery, of course, is, well, destroying their perfectly healthy genitals, all in the name of, of the transgender ideological authoritarian craze. Well, England started this actually before America, because, of course, everybody in Europe is a little bit more woke and liberal and left than America is, believe it or not. Uh, and then they started re-examining this. They started through their National Health Service to say, wait a minute, we're seeing some side effects here. We're seeing some problems here. Let's take a closer look. They're not alone, by the way. Sweden and Scandinavian countries have already stopped using puberty blockers and allowing minors to go through these draconian medieval procedures. Uh, by the way, it's an important moment to pause for a second and recognize that the very countries that are now walking back their transgender, so-called gender-affirming procedures through their health systems are the very countries that the American left hold up as these iconic ideals, the gold standards that we should be trying to replicate here in America, right? They always say, oh, Norway's the best, and Sweden's all those Scandinavian countries, they have great social welfare systems, and uh, and we should be like them. England, oh my God, the National Health Service in England, England's national health care program. I've been told for the last 30 years of my life that America should be ashamed of itself, that we have private insurance and private medical care compared to what they have in England. Why can't we have the British system, right? Their system is the best, right? Right? Well, their system, through the government that controls it and operates it, just said the kids will no longer be put on these puberty blockers as they go through so-called gender-affirming care. So balls in your court, American left. If the National Health Service in England is really the ideal, if you if you want to do everything they do and, and want to have our system replicate theirs, then what's your response to this? Is it is it crazy right-wing mega fascist Christian nationalists who have taken over the national health system in England? Or maybe, just maybe, do they have some sane and reasonable medical professionals and public health care professionals that haven't been politicized like here in America who were looking at the reality of what this draconian, horrific process truly is? You know, these drugs that are used as puberty blockers for children, for 12-year-olds before puberty can begin, they were never approved for this kind of usage. 
They were never tested for this kind of usage. This is called off-label prescription, where a doctor at their discretion can take a drug that was approved for one thing and prescribe it for something else. We're literally experimenting on our children. Literally. And we're being lied to. We're being lied to about these drugs. You you hear it all the time that these puberty blockers, it's temporary. It's, it's like putting a pause on puberty. It's completely reversible. Well, no, it's just not. You only get one puberty. So if you pause it at the age of 12 and then change your mind at the age of, say, 17 or 18, you can't restart puberty. It's over. Those years are gone. You've just chemically prohibited your hormones from being developed and your glands from doing what God created them to do. Oh, but the pharmaceutical industry in America, they've got a solution for that too. Oh, you changed your mind and you want to go through puberty? Good, we got drugs for that too. We'll get you hooked on those. Don't worry about it. We got you covered. They're lying even more to us about this too, also out of England, but this is just a report from earlier this week that I think may have contributed to the National Health Service's decision that they made. Uh, This is them, uh, Great British News, GB News, commenting on a report uh, that shows what appears to be hidden data relating to cancer for children who have been hooked on these puberty blockers. Watch this. WPATH is the World Professional Association of Transgender Health. They're an American-based organization that was formed in 1979. They are the leading global authority on trans treatment across the world uh, for individuals who are suffering from what used to be called gender identity disorder and is now uh, called gender dysphoria. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are very important. They, the, w fi- the WPATH files, which are a recently leaked tranche of internal messages Um, conversations, video clips of um, senior clinicians at WPATH discussing how you treat people who identify as transgender, including children as young as nine. And they're talking about these things. There's uh, messages from their internal chat system. All of this was leaked to a man called Michael Schellenberger, a journalist. It was written up in a report by a journalist called Mia Hughes, which is available now. What it shows, and this is the key finding, what it shows is that uh, there are a lot of senior clinicians within WPATH who are not, by the way, speaking on behalf as spokespeople of WPATH, that's important to emphasize, but they are nonetheless saying that they engage in practices, including surgery, such as nullification, the removing removal of the testes, uh, the kind of surgery that effectively uh, destroys sexual function and ends in sterility, even when it comes to children. And that uh, what these files reveal is that a lot of the people involved in those kind of practices, a lot of the clinicians are fully aware that their patients cannot give informed consent. They talk about how there's even conversations where one clinician says, uh, oh, yes, well, you know, this this kid hasn't even done a uh, biology qualification at high school. Uh, You know, so they know that these people can't give informed consent. They're talking about uh, the uh, castration and um, uh, irreversible surgery on people who have a schizophrenic disorder, dissociative disorder, people who cannot possibly consent to this. They even know that the parents don't understand what's going on. So all of this is going on. And this is especially important because they're also aware that uh, overwhelmingly the children who get referred for gender dysphoria are same-sex attracted. When Hannah Barnes wrote her book about the Tavistock Clinic, she found that between 80 and 90% of adolescents referred were same-sex attracted. What that means is that we have the NHS effectively fixing gay kids, sterilizing gay kids and putting them on Conversion therapy, no? Gay conversion therapy on the NHS, not to put too, too fine a point on it. So it does matter. And it matters for us because WPATH has been hugely influential on policy regarding trans treatment across the globe, including the NHS. There was a document in 2013 written by the NHS about gender dysphoria saying we explicitly follow the WPATH guidelines. Guidelines. Yeah. And so uh, I just I just need you to hear what he said and I'm going to repeat it. The NHS, the National Health Service, again, this is just three days ago when this report was discussed, so it had to motivate the decision that was made yesterday by NHS to stop puberty blockers for children. The NHS is basically knowingly utilizing these procedures on people and children who cannot possibly give consent because they're not aware or have the level of intelligence or education to know what they're consenting to when they get sterilized. And the vast majority of them have same-sex attraction. 20 years ago, these kids would be 
growing up as as gay men and women. And now they're being encouraged instead of living a life as a gay person to a person with same sex attraction, they're being encouraged to sterilize themselves, physically alter and mutilate their perfectly healthy bodies and live their life as the sex that they weren't born. They used to call these procedures, by the way, now they call them top bottom uh, surgeries. They used to call them sex change operations, which is pretty descriptive because they're operations that literally change your sex. And now they call them gender affirming care, which by the way, is completely ass backwards because it does not in fact affirm your gender. It changes how you were born. It is a sex change operation, but of course we need to change words to accommodate our political agenda. It's a nightmare. And he's right. Parents can't get consent either. Parents are being lied to. It's it's not abnormal when you talk to a parent whose child has gone through this process and they feel so guilty. Imagine being a parent and feeling guilty about this when the child then decides later, oh my God, what did you do? I didn't want to, uh, I want to detransition now. Imagine being that parent and the guilt that they have to deal with. And what they're told is, let's say they have a uh, they have a young daughter, and the daughter is feeling gender dysphoria, and the daughter goes and says, "I think I'm a man. I think I'm a boy. I think I'm a boy. I don't want to be a girl anymore. I want to be a boy." And the doctor, they go to the doctor and they say, "What are we supposed to do?" And the doctor, by the way, doctors now in America are only allowed to affirm this. They're not allowed to say, "Well, well, you know, we'll try to get some therapy here and find out if it's psychological or find out if it's this." There's no screening process here. If you take your child to a doctor and say, this is what's going on, the only path they put you on is the, the sex change. It starts with name and pronoun and dress and clothing, but then it goes to puberty blockers, it goes to hormone therapy, and eventually it goes to surgery. And if the parents say to the doctors, I don't think this is the right idea, I think this is going to harm my child, I don't want to do this, the doctor will say to the parents of that little girl, well, it's your choice because we've looked at the statistics. We know what happens here. And if you don't go down this path of sex change and gender affirming care, your child will likely commit suicide. I know you have a daughter right now, but now you have a choice. Do you want a living transgender son or do you want a dead daughter? That's the kind of manipulation that these parents are dealing with right now. And what's a parent to do when faced with that? And here's the thing. We've got more news yesterday on this issue because that statement, your kid will probably commit suicide if you don't let them change their sex. That is also a lie. And now we have the study to prove it. Benjamin Ryan, who writes on these uh, health and science issues, uh, and has contributed to the New York Times, NBC News, The Guardian, The Washington Post, Atlantic, says a brand new study out of California focuses on the suicide rate or attempted suicide rate of transgender women. These are biological men who have gone through the surgical process of having their male genitals transformed into female genitals, all right? Also known as vaginoplasty, and this is in California. This study proves that the attempted suicide rate is twice as high during the period after the surgery is done compared to the period before the surgery is done. There's more data here that Benjamin Ryan uh, points out, and this is a uh, study that was published, which means that it's been peer-reviewed in the Journal of Urology, official journal of the American Urological Association. Those are the specialists that basically focus on and have expertise in male plumbing, let's say. And the study is unequivocal. A young man who is feeling gender dysphoria is more likely to attempt suicide in the period after they have the surgery to change their body parts into female body parts, then they would have attempted suicide before they have the surgery. In other words, everything that the doctors have been telling these parents about the risk of suicide for their children is a lie. It's the exact opposite of the truth. 
going through the procedure will actually help contribute to the mental health decay that the child is already obviously starting to experience and will actually walk them closer to the path of suicide than they were before they went through the process. I need you to keep the faith on issues like this because we continue to tell the truth. We continue to follow what we know is the truth. And slowly but surely, I know it seems like a long march, but slowly but surely, we're going to win. We're going to win because we do have the truth on our side. And our kids are worth it, aren't they? <laughs>